one of the most difficult topics in ultracardiography is white coarus combal tachycardia. So we are going to give you an approach how to diagnose white coarus combal tachycardia and how to manage in this particular lecture. So as far as the ECG is concerned, when the people started reading ECG, when they start reading uh, depolarization, repolarization, they went away from cardiology and became a gastroenterologist, neurologist and so on. So people who have crossed that stage, who have come to electrical axis, went away from medicine, they became surgeons and gynecologists. But people who have crossed that stage who came to arrhythmias, ran from medical college itself, they became engineers and auditors. So that type of difficult topic is going to be the white coarus complex tachycardia. So we are going to go through this plan for this lecture, namely we define what is white QRS, we classify the white QRS, then we give the ECG approach management and give you takeaways. The definition of narrow QRS, uh, high white QRS complex tachycardia in contrast to narrow QRS complex tachycardia, heart rate is more than 100 all right, but the QRS duration is more than 0.12 second. QRS duration is more than 0.12 second or 120 milliseconds. So that is the definition of white QRS complex tachycardia. So just like we classified the narrow QRS complex tachycardia, we classified white QRS complex tachycardia into regular narrow QRS and irregular narrow QRS. Regular white QRS and irregular white QRS. Regular white QRS, the commonest is being ventricular tachycardia or it can be a supraventricular tachycardia with a pre-existing bundle branch block, what we call as a supraventricular tachycardia with aberrant C, aberrant conduction or anti-grade conduction of a supraventricular tachycardia through the accessory pathway which is called antidromic tachycardia. So these are the three types of regular white QRS complete tachycardia. The commonest cause of irregular narrow QRS complete tachycardia is once again atrial fibrillation but atrial fibrillation with a pre-existing bundle branch block. So atrial fibrillation with a pre-existing bundle branch block or atrial fibrillation conducting anti-gradely through the accessory pathway which is called antidromic AF. So these are the two important causes of white QRS irregular tachycardia and most dangerous arrhythmias are polymorphic ventral tachycardias and tarsity pointers due to long QT interval. So this is a classification of white QRS complex tachycardia. So white QRS complex tachycardia, the commonest is being the ventricular tachycardia. Here a ventricular ectopic pacemaker is firing rapidly. So the impulse from the ventricular ectopic pacemaker has to go through the muscle to depolarize all the other areas of the ventricle. So naturally the ventricular tachycardia will have white QRS. But another important uh, cause of white QRS complex tachycardia is that Although the supraventricular tachycardia is happening like atrial AVNRT or AVRT or atrial tachycardia, if the patient already has a pre-existing bundle branch block, I told you in a lecture on bundle branch block that basically bundle branch is diagnosed when your sinus rhythm has got white QRS. So in sinus rhythm itself, they will have white QRS. So in the presence of a supraventricular tachycardia also, the supraventricular tachycardia beats also will be conducted through one bundle and come to the other ventricle through the muscle. So they will also have white quartz complete tachycardia. Although it is a supraventricular tachycardia, if there is a pre-existing bundle branch block, they will have white quartz complete tachycardia. The next important cause of white quartz complete tachycardia about the accessory pathway I told you. In orthodromic tachycardia, we see at like AVRT, the anti-grade conduction was through the normal conduction, retrograde was through accessory pathway. This is called anthrodromic, which was narrow. Whereas in antidromic tachycardia, the supraventricular tachycardia, supraventricular impulses will come anti-gradely through the accessory pathway and go retrogradely through the normal pathway. Because accessory pathway is connecting the muscle, because anti-grade conduction has to go through the muscle, so this will result in a white quartz complex tachycardia. So antidromic tachycardia can be an atrial flutter with antidromic tachycardia or yeah, atrial fibrillation with antidromic tachycardia. So antidromic tachycardia also result in white QRS complex tachycardia. So among them, the commonest is ventricular tachycardia followed by supraventricular tachycardia with the bundle branch block followed by antidromic tachycardia or pre-excited tachycardias. So 
once you have so this is a white quartz complex tachycardia so once you diagnose it's a white quartz complex tachycardia it is called non sustained white quartz complex tachycardia when it is lasting less than 30 seconds a yeah, bout of tachycardia then the sinusism comes a bout of tachycardia sinusism comes then it is non sustained a yeah, sustained white quartz complex tachycardia is sustaining more than 30 seconds and many minutes or many hours the tachycardia goes on so it is sustained white quartz complex tachycardia then in the white quartz complex tachycardia you must see in a given particular lead whether all your QRS complexes are of similar configuration. So, you look at L3 here, all my QRS complexes are similar. So, it is a monomorphic white QRS complex tachycardia. So, it is a monomorphic. From single focus, the ventricular tachycardia is being fired by a single ventricular ectopic pacemaker. So, it is monomorphic. Whereas, look at this white QRS complex tachycardia here. Each QRS complex is different in height, different in direction, different in width, and different in aberrancy, in, different in notches, and different in amplitude also. So, this is a polymorphic white QRS complex tachycardia. So, most often it is a tar CD point. Then, the classification of white QRS complex tachycardia depends upon whether the V1 is positive or the V1 is negative. If the V1 is positive, where you get V1 positive in the right bundle branch block. So, whenever V1 is white quartz complex tachycardia with a V1 positive tachycardia is called RBB type of white quartz complex tachycardia because V1 positive white quartz complex tachycardia called RBB type. Whenever the QRS is negative in V1 and the QRS is positive in V5, V6, it is LBB type of white quartz complex tachycardia. So, it can be RBB type where the V1 is positive it can be LBB type where V5, V6 are positive. So, ventricle tech, white quartz complex tachycardia has got so much of classification depending upon. So, we classified whether it is VT, SVT the aberrancy or pre-excited tachycardia, whether it is sustained or non-sustained, monomorphic or polymorphic, RBB type or LBB type. So, this is the classification of white quartz complex tachycardia. Then we come to the approach, the diagnosis of white quartz complex tachycardia.